Hello and welcome, my name is Lexi and here I like to talk about luxury beauty and that includes food aid brushes. Today we are taking a look at the Chikahoto Zen series. This is a limited edition series of brushes made out of silver fox hair. So this series, it's sold out immediately. They're very limited in numbers. You know, they don't have a ton of these available and so they go very quickly when they are available but I have heard rumors of a restock happening very soon. So definitely wanted to get this up in time for that, but let's take a look at these. So we do have six brushes in the set, and this is our ZE1. So there is a Chikahoto Z series that is going to be a little bit different. That's kind of their iconic series that you know everybody thinks of with squirrel hair. So this is ZE1, the powder brush. And on the brushes, it actually has the name of like the makeup category that you would use. So this actually says powder on here and you'll see some of them do actually repeat. So I would personally prefer if they had the actual name on there or not name rather the number, the ZE1, but you can see that these brushes, we have Granadillo wood, which is, you know, a very, very nice you know, wood that's used for like fine furniture and so forth in Japan. And it's very high quality, high grade. And we have these metallic ferrules, which are sort of like a sage green. And then we have the silver fox hair. So this is ZE1. We have ZE2 here, which is your powder cheek brush. And you can see you've got the Chikahoto there with some Chinese characters or Japanese characters rather. And, you know, I think that's actually a nice touch. I really like that. We also have ZE3, which is your quintessential cheek brush. We have ZE4, which is your highlighter. And then these two here are both eyeshadow brushes. And I have to say, you know, I, when I got this at first, you'll see I have some videos where I've used this brush. I use it for highlight usually. So today we'll look at the eyeshadow functions, but I do have previous videos using this as a highlighting brush. And this is eyeshadow. This is gonna be your ZE5. And then we have ZE6. This one is also eyeshadow. You can see it's more of a shader style but it's fairly long. These brush, so, this whole brush series was designed and everything was carefully selected by Teshu Takamori. And if you're not familiar with who he is, he is like this huge brush master. <laughs> so uh, you'll see his name sometimes on some brush handles as well. So this is actually one of the Chikahoto brushes that came out this year part of the Maki series and you can see his name is right here on the handle and you know brushes made and designed by him are you know always at the highest level so we're going to take a look at each of these brushes individually as well as some comparisons so we're going to start off with the Chikahoto ZE1 the powder brush and this is a beautiful round flat brush. And I just want to say we're going to be doing a bunch of comparisons, but at the end of going through each of these brushes, we will look at the FO series set as well as the Kazan series set, you know, as a whole as well. So this here is a round flat brush. What that means here is that the ferrule is going to be more of an oval shape. So it's almost round, but not completely rounded. And that means in my opinion, it's best to do more of this kind of sweeping back and forth motion. You can definitely swirl it, but when you swirl it, because this is not perfectly round, you'll feel a little bit more resistance when you are, you know, going through the more, the longer portion. So that's kind of how this goes. Now, fox hair, if you are familiar with squirrel hair, fox hair is going to be just as soft. In some cases, in some cases it's even softer, but one of the differences is how these fibers bounce back. So look at this and you can see how quickly they spring back. There's a lot of spring to these and they're a little bit bouncier. So that's just something to note here. Let's take a look at this general shape and then we'll look at some comparisons here. So you can see that the shorter hairs are starting about here and they're gradually going up to here. We have almost a little ridge right at the top where it's flat, okay? But it's gonna be, you know, again, kind of round it here on the sides. So this is gonna be our ZE1. Now, this brush here is the Suku powder brush, 
And this is going to be squirrel hair. You can see that this actually has a round ferrule here. You can see it's a little bit, um, you know, a little bit more angular here, a little bit more pointy, but look how the squirrel hair fibers go. You can see that they're softer. They don't bounce back as quickly. So look at this versus this. You can just see how these are going to, to go. So what that means then, in my opinion, is although you're going to get a very soft finish with the fox hair bristles, and you would with the squirrel hair as well, but the fox, because it has a little bit more spring, it also buffs just a little bit. So, you know, there's slightly more pressure from the bristle onto your skin to kind of buff that product in, even though, you know, this is obviously not a buffing brush. You're not gonna get the same effect as that. I'm just talking about in comparison to something like the squirrel hair, which is gonna be kind of fluffier in a way. So this is the difference in the shape with the Suku. Let's look at this one here. This is also going to be a round flat brush. This is one of the Maki brushes from Chikahoto. You can see the beautiful Sakura flowers on here. And you can see that shape wise, this Chikahoto Sakura brush is going to be a little bit wider here. The general shape here of the bristles and you know, the actual brush head is actually fairly similar, but this Sakura brush is gonna be slightly larger in, well, we've got more bristles, so it's gonna be a little bit thicker. The length is approximately the same. One of the differences here is you can see this kind of um, gradation here. This is slightly more angular. This is gonna be a little bit more rounded in the Sakura. However, I wanna say this is actually my most comparable in shape to the ZE1. And again, look at how this one goes. You can see this is not gonna be quite as airy and fluffy as the Suku. And again, that's because of the general shape, but it is still going to have less spring than the fox hair. Now I have to say with so regards to softness between these two, the ZE just feels ever so slightly softer and smoother on the skin than this one. They're very close. This just has a slightly silkier texture to it. Are you going to know if you're blindfolded? You might. You know, it, it's real. You know, if you are very familiar with brushes and you're used to how they they feel, you could tell a difference. For the average person, you're just going to feel extreme softness. Next, let's look at a, another squirrel hairbrush. This is the KZ01 from Chikahoto. And again, this is also, it, this is a round flat, although it's almost round. You can see it's much more round than the ZE one. And shape-wise, this is gonna be just a slightly more of a ball shape, and you can see it's a little bit shorter in hair length as well. So this is gonna be squirrel. You can see it's, you're gonna have a little bit of an area, you know, less spring to it compared to this. So they are fairly similar in shape, but you know, not exactly. Again, the Sakura Maki brush is going to be my most comparable. Now this one here is actually not like it at all, but I do want to compare this because this is the Chikahoto PF O brush. This is a limited edition brush that comes around every few years. This is version two. Version one was a little bit different. Version three is coming out and it's gonna be a little bit longer. So version three actually might be more like the ZE1. So it's gonna be about 11 millimeters longer. So they're gonna be much more comparable in length here. But notice this does have a round ferrule. This is kind of like a big ball. This one's great for buffing. Very soft, very nice, very luxurious brush. So I just wanted to compare it because version three, I think is gonna be much more similar to this, but in a round ferrule versus the oval ferrule. And last up, we have two brushes from the FO series. So the FO series started off with, I believe eight brushes in the series originally. FO1 was a powder brush, that's this one here. You can see it's significantly smaller. The handle length is also smaller in the FO series. You can see we have a lighter wood, a you know brighter green ferrule here, and these are also going to be silver fox. So when you are just touching them, I have to say they do feel very similar, but I feel like the ZE fibers feel ever so slightly thicker 
than the ones in the FO. So they're gonna be similar. This is probably slightly higher quality grade of the fibers here, the actual hairs. They feel a little bit smoother, a little bit thicker, just a little bit silkier, but it's not, you know, when you get to this level of quality, you're not talking huge differences here. You would be happy with either, but I do want to show you how this is a round flap, but it's significantly shorter. And the way this one is shaped, is going to give you an airier finish versus the ZE1, which you can see uh, you, when I'm turning this, you can see it's not really splaying out as much on the sides. There's kind of that solid core that's sticking there, whereas these are really going to splay out a bit more. So we're looking at that because of this shape. It's going to be a little bit more of a ball shape here compared to this. Now, recently they added the F09 brush, which is essentially a larger version of the F01. It's a little bit more square. And again, we've got more of a pinched ferrule here and look at that. So in this case, we're looking at a handle length that is the same, pretty much. This is ever so slightly shorter, but it's actually not going to be, it's a little bit longer than my F01. And you can see that the width is going to be thicker here on the ZE one. It's a little bit more narrow in the FO9. And the hair length is ever so slightly longer in the ZE one. But we have more longer hairs here. Whereas this is going to start, we start getting more of that angle. This is going to be a little bit more straight. We are getting an angle, but it's more gradual. So most of these are going to be longer. You can see how this one goes. Again, it's going to be a little bit airier. So let's take a quick look at the ZE1. I personally like to use this for setting powder or finishing powder. Usually my finishing powders, I most often prefer to use a buffing brush, but when I'm using like a lighter, more delicate finishing powder, I do like to use something a little fluffier than this. And this will give me a little bit of the best of both worlds because it's not really gonna give me a true buffing action, but yet yeah, it's not gonna be light and airy enough that I'm going to see powder flakes on my skin. So I really do like this one for setting this all, all of the brushes in this line are recommended for powders only so this is definitely a great brush to have in your kit and I think you know it's just it's going to give a little bit more body to the motion than your typical squirrel hairbrush of a similar shape so let's move on to the ZE2 this is the powder cheek brush and this is essentially a smaller version of the ZE1. You can see it's also gonna be a round flat brush. We have the similar shape here. Mine's a little wonky there just from drying, but look, you can see your shape is going to be essentially the same here, but this is just smaller overall. Let's start off with the demo for the ZE2. And in this case, this brush is incredibly versatile. If you don't want to purchase the ZE1, this is definitely one that you can still use for setting and finishing powder. It's going to have essentially the same results. It's just a little bit smaller, so it's going to take, you know, a few extra seconds, which is really no big deal in the grand scheme of things. And this brush is also very useful as a large blush brush. So for me, I actually do have a smaller sized head, so uh, for me, with using this for blush, I like it for lighter color blushes that are a little bit closer to my skin tone. So, you know, if I'm looking for like a light highlighting blush, that works well for that. Because of this round flat shape, if I want to use the more narrow end of this, I can actually use that for highlighting as well. And I actually really like this one for bronzer as well. If I use the narrow side to kind of apply it, kind of put that on that way. And then if I want to kind of blend out the edges a little bit more, I can turn that and kind of, you know, just brush that softly there along the skin. So I think this brush in particular is probably the most versatile brush in this particular line. Let's look at a few comparisons. So uh, this here is the Beautylish Chikahoto collaboration brush from the Year of the Rat. Now I believe it's just Beautylish Presents, but I purchased mine, um, you know, originally when it first launched. 
and it was a Chikahoto brush at that time. You can see here that this is going to be, it's technically an oval ferrule as well, but it's almost round. So our motion here is gonna be like this. We did kind of talk about this with the Z1. So we're just gonna take a quick look. You can see that the Beautylish brush is gonna be wider and the hair length is actually about the same length between these two. Now we're looking at the Chikahoto Maki brush from this year. This is the one I held up before that has the Teshu Takamori name on here. Again, we're looking at a round flat brush here. This is gonna be a little bit wider and you can see it's got a little bit more of a square shape. So our fibers are going up to here, then they angle over. We've got a little bit of a flatter top, whereas this is gonna be a little bit more gradual and it's more rounded and yeah, because of this, and again, we've got kind of that angle at the top, that's what's gonna make this able to work directionally on the skin, whereas this one's just a little bit too fluffy for this. This is actually round enough that you can get a twirly motion without kind of that like kicking action that you get here with the ZE2. So notice when I go around my hand how when we're twirling it and we get to this more narrow portion here, it kind of, everything kind of catches up to that. It kind of kicks. Now, I did want to mention that this Sakura Maki brush here from Chikahoto is essentially a larger version of this Maki brush. So, you know, again, similar comparisons are going to go with this, but this is just going to be on a larger scale than this year's Maki. This is the Chikahoto KZ02 brush. Notice that the KZ ser series does have the same type of wooden handle. Our ferrules are different. We have a glossy block, a black versus this metallic green, and but they're both using the Granadillo wood. Okay, so this is the KZ2, which is kind of your powder cheek brush as well, but notice this is gonna be a bit more square. We do have an oval ferrule here, but this is slightly more rounded than the ZE2. And you can see that the ZE2, it kind of tapers a bit more, whereas this is gonna be a little bit more ball-like. It's We've got more of a gradual change from this point on. So just how this one goes, you can see this, you can twirl. It's again, not as efficient a twirling as it is in a back and forth motion, but it's not as drastic of a difference as it is with the ZE2. And this is a Sonia G Inoshigo Pro brush, and you can see the handle length is going to be different. This brush shape is not, you know, not exactly the same. This is almost more of a candle shape, but, and this has, you know, a round ferrule here, but it does just kind of remind me of it a little bit. So, you know, I just wanted to include it because it has a little bit of a similar action if you're twirling. Um, this, again, very different shape, but look at the hair length. It's going to be a little bit shorter. And it's just like this top portion of each brush is very similar to me. So let's move on to the ZE3. This is a cheek brush. You can see this is going to be more of a square shape with a slight arch here at the top. So we've got more of a square shape blush brush here. And this looks almost round, but it is still round flat. So you can see that this is gonna look a little bit more square here, but when you turn that, notice you know the appearance here, you can see that it is more narrow. So this is gonna be the cheek brush. Let's look at the quick demo here. And for this brush, I really like this one in particular for blush. Uh, you could use this for blush or for bronzer. Personally, for me, those are really the two functions that I would use this one for. It puts on the product very nicely. You know, if you are going to have a firmer product in the pan, these are not, these brushes are a little bit too soft for pickup for that, but it's going to give you this really soft glow on your skin. Again, because the squirrel hair has a little bit more spring to it, it does have a very, very faint buffing action, which helps produce a little bit more of that glow from some products. So I think this brush is really effective as a blush brush, and I really like it. So let's look at a few comparisons here. This is the Chikahoto 
This is from the KZ series. This is KZ4. And this is my favorite blush brush. Notice this is gonna be a little bit more round and it's smaller overall. Look at the difference here. This is the KZ4. And here is our Z3. So again, you've got a little bit more spring here. Uh, but I do think both of them perform very well for putting the products on. And again, this will just have a very slight bit more buffing. But notice, aside from this being more rounded, the placement of the hairs to give you that shape is very, very similar. But the KZ4 is just going to be on a smaller scale. Now, this is the Chikahoto F03. And you can see that, again, we've got a round flat brush here. Brush head wise, the hair lengths are ever so slightly longer in the F03. And this is gonna be not quite, we saw that square shape, but notice it doesn't really flay out as much as the ZE does. So this is, again, just a little bit looser and airier than the ZE. Notice the difference in the spring. And I really think that has to do with probably the grade of the hairs more so than anything else. But I feel like these are slightly like looser and airier in general, the way they're bundled versus this. So it, perhaps it's like pinched a little bit more inside. And just a quick comparison. Again, our shape is very different, but this is the Inoshigo Pro from Sonya G. And these are actually fairly similar if you chop those off right there. I mean, look at that. It's pretty, pretty similar there. And um, yeah, so this is going to be a more rounded, but it does just make me think of it. Again, though, this, because of the round flat, it does do better as a sweeping or padding motion versus a twirling motion. Next, we're looking at the ZE4. This is actually the highlighter brush. And you can see again, we're looking at a round flat brush. We've got hairs as short as this that are going up pretty drastically. So it's, you know, they're gonna be pretty straight. And this does have kind of that rainbow arc there. So this is a really nice brush and it works great for highlighter, but it's also small, large enough that you can use this for blush. So let's take a look at a demo with this one. And I used it for highlighter here, but this is also one that you can use to apply powder like under the eyes, or if you wanna use it in strategic places around your face, this is the perfect size for that. Perfect size to work around the nose. So I think this is a really great brush and uh, like a fantastic size. And I'm surprisingly don't really have anything quite like it in my collection, but let's take a look. One of my closest matches here is this Hakahoto brush. This is the B5519. You can see that this shape here is going to be, this is a little bit wider, but notice the shape of the bristles here. Uh, there's a little bit more of a drastic uh, tapering here, essentially, versus this, which is going to be just a little bit flatter. It's also going to be more narrow. And this here, again, we're going to want a similar motion here, but it's squirrel hair, this Hakahoto. So the airiness of it does, you know, conform a little bit more to a twirling motion compared comparatively. However, this one does swirl a little bit better than the other ZE series brushes that we have looked at. So if you look at these, you can see that this is just going to be a slightly more drastic pyramidal shape all around compared to the ZE brush. Now, I did want to take a look at two of the KZ brushes. This bigger one here is KZ3. The smaller one is KZ5. And let's put the ZE in the middle here. So you can see it's kind of in between the two sizes here. It's closer to the KZ5. And shape-wise, they're pretty similar. The ZE is a little bit longer. Notice the height difference here. Shape-wise, they are fairly similar though. And the, you can see that the KZ is just a little bit more rounded compared to the ZE, which is just a little bit more pinched, but they're gonna be pretty comparable. This 
one here, the KZ3, is more rounded. We do have a similar shape, uh, you know, placement of the bristles, but it's in a round ferrule versus that oval ferrule, which gives it a different function and shape here. But you can see it's definitely going to be larger. So this KZ5 brush is going to be my closest comparison with the Chikahoto ZE, what are we on, four now. Now I did wanna just do a quick comparison here. This is the Refer 19 and this is one of the original ones. I believe the handle is shorter on this one now. This has a slightly different shape here. It's more candle wick. You can see it's gonna be a little bit wider but this is going to be the same size brush head. So if you already have this brush in your collection, it's just great to be able to see the size comparison. You can see this is about one and a half times thicker than the ZE4. So let's take a look at the ZE5. So this is technically an eyeshadow brush, but as I mentioned, I have videos where I have used this as a highlighting brush. I'll leave those linked down below in the description box. But I think this is a really versatile brush because it works well as a highlighter. You can use this for powder, you know, and in strategic areas, but you can also use this for eyeshadow. So let's look at how I use this for eyeshadow. This is a little bit large for me for the eye, so I like to use this more for like an overall base, but because of this shape, this general shape, I really like to use this shape also kind of to finish off an eye look and blend colors together, uh, kind of like with the Surratt Smoky brushes. So that's, yeah, I have to say though, like this has just a little bit more spring. So I don't feel like it's as effective in that capacity as the Surratt brushes, but it is another function you can use this for. You can definitely use this for all of our placement of an eyeshadow or as a crease brush, but it is on the larger side. If you have smaller eyes, you know, this is probably just too big. As a matter of fact, I think both eye brushes are too large. <laughs> so let's take a look at some comparisons. This is the Surratt Smoky brush in the Grande size. So this is the largest one. So I don't even really use this one too much. I most often use the Moyenne or the medium size, which is this one. And I like to use that. You put it on like this to kind of give you a softer blend in a horizontal fashion on your eyes and it works beautifully for that but you can see you've got shorter hairs that go up shape wise these are going to be fairly similar but again your big difference in how it functions is your hair type and the squirrel hair in the Surratt brush is very soft very malleable and it doesn't have as much spring whereas this one does in the ZE so because of that spring, I find it to be not as effective for that sort of blending motion, but it does work really well in the crease and it works really well for laying down shadows. So those are kind of my preferences for it. But I have to say because of this spring, that's why I think it works really well for highlighter too, because it's a little bit firmer. This would work well for highlight if you have something very, very soft, you don't need to you know, you're essentially maybe even like a loose powder highlighter or something. But if you want something a little bit firmer to pick product up out of a pan, this brush is a bit more effective at that. And so I think this one works really well for a highlighting brush as well. And that's actually my preferred use for this one. And yeah, that's probably how I'll use it most of the time. So another comparison that I have and this is actually my last comparison. <laughs> this is a Tansado brush. So I'll, I don't know if it has a name, but I'll leave it. Um, I'll, I'll put the information that I can on here, but you can see this is actually just gonna be angled one way. So it's not really that candle flame shape that you have in the ZE series, but you can see the Tansado is overall a little bit bigger. This works well for a uh, highlighting brush. So, uh, you know, it's gonna be kind of a comparable type of function if you were to use this one for highlighting. But those are my closest comparisons for that one. It's really a unique brush in my collection. Next, let's take a look at the ZE6. This is the last one in the series, and you have this shader style shape. And let's look at how this performs on the eye. This is gonna be a larger brush, so for me, this is really one that I prefer to use for one and done kind of shades, and it works well for that. It's just not my preferred brush for that. I actually prefer the KZ 
brush for that. So that is going to be the KZ6. And part of that is the size, but also how narrow this one is. So this one's pretty narrow, like a flat shader. The KZ6 has a little bit more width to it. So it can also kind of work well in the crease, you know, if you want. So I just feel like it works a little bit more efficiently for my purpose that way. Whereas this will put the powder down very nicely. Now, just something to note, and you can see this in the demos, when I'm working with a soft, powdery matte shadow you know it puts the product on very nicely it blends that out very well works beautifully like that but if i'm using a shimmery shadow and a lot of these shimmery shadows in order to keep those shimmery things together they're a little bit creamier in nature even though they're still powder it does not pick up the product as well it's a little bit too soft for that if the bristles on here were a little bit shorter in length it would have a little bit better pickup but because it is longer it doesn't pick up as well so it will give you more of that soft scattered starlight effect with a shimmery shadow versus something more opaque so it's all about what type of application you prefer but it does work well with both depending on what kind of effect you are looking for so let's look at a few comparisons this is the KZ6. You can see it's gonna be a little bit wider. They're both kind of the oval ferrule here, but you can see this is gonna be a little bit boxier and more square. So the way this one goes, and you know, I can use it in the crease this way. But with the ZE, it works well for this, but it has just a little bit too much spring in the crease to give you kind of that soft blend. So that's gonna be the difference there. And then we have the FO5 from the FO series. This is gonna be similar in length, but you can see it's gonna be a little bit more square and you know, it's just a little bit longer here. So that's gonna be a difference with that. This, you know, again, back and forth, doesn't work as well in the crease, but it does work better in the crease than the uh, ZE6. So just a little difference there between the two of these, I do prefer the FO brush. And the last one for reference here, this is the Sonia G Jumbo Blender. Just wanna show you, this is our handle size difference, brush head size. So it is about one and a half to one and three fourths times longer in the ZE6 in comparison. The width in the Jumbo Blender is a little bit wider as well. And this is more square, but I did just wanna show you how this compares, cause I know this is a brush a lot of people do already have in their collection. So overall, my thoughts on this series, I have to say I think it is a very nice brush series very luxurious, definitely worth having a brush or two from this. Do you need all of the brushes in this set? You know, it really depends on your particular collection and what you're looking for. But my personal favorites in this set would, well, my very number one favorite is the Z2 because I do think this is the most versatile brush in the collection. You can use it in so many different ways. And if you're looking for a luxurious powder brush, you really can't go wrong with the ZE1. So, then my next favorite would actually be this Z5 eyeshadow brush, but again for highlighter, followed by the ZE4. Then we go with the ZE3 powder brush, and then last up is going to be the ZE6. So that's kind of how I've ranked them. But if you were looking to pick up one or two, I would definitely consider the ZE2 and the ZE5 just because I feel like they're the most versatile and unique brushes in this collection. Now let's take a quick look at the Chikahoto FO series. So this is Silver Fox series as well. And this one came out a few years ago and they've been adding on some pieces. You can see I do have some with brighter ferrules and some with slightly like mossier ferrules. And that's just, you know, different batches. So overall, I think this is a great series. Now this compared to the ZE, the ZE series is gonna be more luxurious. It's going to be a little bit softer. It does have more spring. So if that's something you like, 
then the ZE is a good choice. If that if you want something airier, the FO is actually a better choice. Now, price-wise, the FO series is going to be more affordable, and this is a permanent collection. So this one is going to be available more easily than the ZE series, which is around for a limited time. And it will probably restock on limited base basis throughout the years, but it's not going to be something that you can just be like, oh, you know, I really need to pick up that brush. Let me just go place an order. You know, chances are things will be out of stock, whereas the FO series is going to be more readily available. Now we did compare some of the brushes already during the comparisons, but the FO series has some other brush shapes and sizes that you know are not included in the Z series, like this FO2, which is a buffing brush. And you know, I personally always use my fox hair brushes for powders. This one here, I actually use to buff in blush and highlighter afterwards, or buff in some finishing powder on top of that and so forth. It's really, really soft, really great to use on there. And I love this FO4 brush, which is an angled cheek brush. This is something that's not in the Z series. It's one of my all time favorite brushes for bronzer. That's primarily what I use it for. It's also great for blush, but I use it mostly for bronzer. Now, I just wanted to show you the brush sizes, the ZE versus the FO. You have a lot more variety and options in the FO series, and these are gonna be smaller size. So I do think the FO eye brushes are overall better than the ZE eye brushes. And honestly, you're not gonna notice a huge difference in the texture and the hair quality between the two of these on the eye brushes, in my opinion. So I, I think, you know, on larger brushes, you can notice a difference more easily than you can with a smaller brush. So I would choose the FO eye brushes over the ZE eye brushes in general. Although again, this one, I'm really considering more of a highlighter brush. So, yeah, overall between those two series, I think they both have great pieces and it's really more just about what you're looking for. Then I also wanted to take a quick look here with the Chikahoto Kazan series or KZ series. So this is Kazan Squirrel, which is squirrel hair, just like we talked about some other squirrel hairs, but this is slightly different. It's a little bit harder to find. This is another brush series that basically came out. It was supposed to be permanent, but then with supply issues and everything, it became a limited series as well. So this will restock periodically some pieces. Some of them have officially been retired, such as the KZ one. And that's because, you know, to get these longer hairs in this gray is really challenging. And you have to, you know, it's, it's something that's not readily available. So that is, you know, it's hard to get these brushes. You know, if you see a restock on one of these, run. This is still my all time favorite brush series that has come out. I do have duplicates of a couple of these brushes that I use all the time, like the KZ4 and the KZ2, because those are the ones that I use all the time. Oh, and the KZ6. So I have duplicates of these three because I, I use them so frequently. The KZ6 is my number one one and done eyeshadow brush. This does restock periodically, so definitely keep an eye out for that. You have a better shot at getting some of the, like the smaller eye brushes as, as a restock than the larger brushes, because again, you're using shorter hair, so they're more, it's a little bit easier to get those. But, you know, I have to say these are just amazing. So comparatively to the ZE series, we do have the same Grenadillo wood handles. The ferrules are gonna be different. Um, texturally, you know, this is, you know, it's probably not thicker, but it does feel like a thicker metal. Whereas this with the metallic finish just feels a little bit thinner. So I do prefer the ferrule on the KZ series. Uh, texturally, you know, honestly, which one's softer? They both feel equally as soft, but different. These hairs in the KZ series feel a little bit thinner, a little bit finer, whereas these are gonna feel a little bit thicker and a little bit, you know, they, they have a silky texture too, but because of the diameter of the actual fibers feeling a little bit thicker, they do feel a little bit differently. 
but they're both gonna be incredibly soft on the skin and yeah, you can't go wrong with either set. And you know, there's a difference. This is gonna have more spring, these are not. It's really about which ones you want, but this brush series, the KZ, is still just my, my favorite. However, I'm very happy that I ended up purchasing the Zen series. I was originally just trying to get a couple brushes and I was unable to get them, so I had to purchase the whole set or get nothing. So I did pick up the whole set and I purchased mine as a set. So it actually comes in a nice box with a brush case and everything as well. But you know, I think these are definitely great and I'm really glad I picked these up because they are significantly different in my opinion to the FO series. So it's kind of, you know, just, an, it's actually more similar to the PFO in texture because the PFO has a lot of spring. It's more of a buffing brush. This is kind of in between the PFO brush and the FO series. So I feel like this is just a really great series to have. And again, they are limited. So if you're interested in them, when you see them, you know, definitely take advantage of that. These will never go on sale. Whatever price you see them for, that is the price they will be. Even if you see a site with sales, these are supposed to always be excluded from sales because of their limited availability. And they also have limits on purchasing so that somebody cannot purchase a whole bunch and then go and sell them for a markup. So it's typically one per customer. So just some things to note there, but you know, I definitely think if you are in the market for brushes like this, they're well worth it. They are gonna be at a higher price tag. And do I think that's an, I, I do think that they are worth the price tag. So I hope this was helpful. And you know, let me know what you think down below in the comments. And I will see you very soon. So thank you so much for tuning in and I hope you have a great day.